Well, the weather has started turning colder. The days are becoming shorter. The plants in the garden are starting to die. The children are back in school and the leaves on the trees are beginning to change color once again. That can only mean one thing. It's time for the start of the pen habit season four. Welcome to Pen Habit Season 4, pen friends. I am Matt Armstrong, your follically challenged host here at the Pen Habit. I've had an eventful and somewhat productive hiatus, and I'm glad to be back with a whole passel of new pen and ink reviews, not to mention a metric butt ton of new giveaways. And, and that, that is an actual unit of measurement, a metric butt ton. Anyway, speaking of giveaways, and probably ought to get this out of the way right up front, uh, thanks to the Amazing generosity of Kenro Industries, the U.S. distributor of Aurora, Montegrappa, Omas, Conway Stewart. Uh, I am running a giveaway for an Aurora Optima right now. It's a $600 pen. You get to pick your choice of, of uh, color of the pen and your choice of nib, and they will ship it to you. So that is going on over at penhabit.com. Look for the post that says Aurora Optima giveaway, and uh, and you can submit there. Now, I've, I've mentioned this before. I'll say it again really quickly. Unfortunately, this particular giveaway is U.S. only. Uh, I've got a ton of other giveaways coming, so uh, I know it's a little disappointing, but hang on because it's not going to be that much longer and there'll be a bunch more worldwide giveaways coming up. In any case, I am very glad to be back for the start of the new season. So as most of you know, I was laid off from my job back at the end of March and spent most of my summer looking for a new job. I recently landed a new gig. It starts in just a couple days on the, this coming Monday, and I'm excited to get back to work. But despite the major hit to my savings account that six months of unemployment caused, the time off left me with a lot of free time during which I was really able to make some great changes to the pen habit. The first thing you may notice is that the pen habit has made this jump into 4K video. Now, Many of you may not notice the difference, but it's about four times the resolution of your standard 1080p video. Um, if you've got a 4K monitor or television and the bandwidth to support it, though, you should now be able to count the pores in my skin. So in addition to upgrading the video quality, I've created some new animations, written some new music, upgraded the studio for a better overhead camera mount and lighting mounts, and I've been tweaking the format a little bit of the reviews so that they are shorter and more concise. Now, I don't promise they're all going to be shorter, but I am trying. I wanted to use this welcome video to go over a few items of business that will be applicable throughout the season. Kind of the first item I wanted to talk about is the schedule. Now, in previous seasons, the schedule's been kind of all over the place. Uh, this season, I'd like to try to have a slightly more regular schedule. So the plan is that every Thursday, a new Currently Inked video will come out. And if you haven't been watching Currently Inked over the hiatus, Currently Inked is my video that's kind of like a vlog discussion sort of thing. It's, it's real low-key, very simple for me to put together very fast. Uh, every Saturday will be the full produced review videos, and these are going to be the three camera videos that you've come to expect from the pen habit. Um, the plan is to do two videos every week. Every once in a while, I may throw a third video in, a second review video, and that might come out. If I do that, those will come out on Tuesday. Just so you are aware, that's going to be kind of the plan for this coming season. I did a video about this a little earlier during the summer, but I wanted to bring it up again. Over the summer, I received a couple of different requests to possibly add closed captioning to pen habit videos. Now, this is something that I would love to be able to do for my hard of hearing viewers. There's just not enough time in the day for me to do this all myself while still putting out videos. Nor does the pen habit really generate enough money to cover the costs of hiring that kind of work out. Now, YouTube does have a voice recognition system that will kind of do closed captioning, but as you might imagine, it's not great, especially since these pen videos use a lot of terminology and brand names that are not commonly known outside of the fountain pen community. Uh, YouTube can, for instance, translate the word nib into the word nip, 
or even worse things that have racist overtones. So uh, fortunately, YouTube has added a feature which allows the community to contribute closed captions. So to that end, I'd love to ask for your help with that process. If you've got a few spare minutes to help transcribe any of my videos, I would be greatly appreciative. To learn more, you can watch this video here about how that works. A big part of what makes these videos possible are my many wonderful supporters who have donated money to help cover the costs of producing these videos. So let me start off by saying a huge thank you to those of you who have or continue to contribute. I know I say this all the time, but I really couldn't do this without you. Even with sponsors and ad revenue from Google, the great majority of the support that allows me the time to record, edit, photograph, and write these reviews comes from you, wonderful viewers. Now, one of the methods of contribution I use is a crowdfunding site called Patreon. If you're not familiar with it, it works by allowing you to set a dollar amount that you'd be willing to donate per video, as well as a monthly maximum. So, for instance, if you wanted to donate $5 per video but didn't want to donate more than $20 a month, you could set it up to do that. Then at the end of the month, they only charge you for the videos that I put out up to the maximum amount. That way, you wouldn't be charged if I don't make any videos. During the summer hiatus, none of my videos, including the currently inked videos, were being added to Patreon, and none of my patrons were being charged, and I did that on purpose. Um, I was playing around with a lot of things. I wanted to get some stuff settled in before I started charging people for videos. So starting with my first review tomorrow, that comes out tomorrow, my videos will be go back to being added to Patreon again. So if you are already a Patreon patron, now is a really good time to review and update your contributions so you're not surprised at a bill at the end of September. If you are not, now's a really great time to consider becoming a supporter. And of course, if you prefer to do a one-time donation to The Pen Habit, I would love that as well. I accept donations via PayPal, Google Wallet, or Venmo, and you can find out more information about supporting The Pen Habit in the video description or by clicking this link. I mentioned this a little earlier, but season four is going to be a very giveaway heavy season. A lot of retailers, distributors, manufacturers have provided pens for me to review and then to give away. Now, normally I try to do my giveaways shortly after the reviews, but I've got so many really good giveaway pens this season that I'm trying to spread them out a little bit. So the giveaway may not happen real close to the review. People ask me all the time though, how to find and enter my giveaways. So I thought I'd spend a little bit of time to clarify here, just so there's less confusion, I don't have to answer the same question over and over again in email. All of my giveaways happen on blog posts on penhabit.com. So that's always the best place to start looking for giveaways is the front page of penhabit.com. I run my giveaways through the site Rafflecopter, which handles taking the entries in and then picking the winners at random once the giveaway is over. I always announce giveaways on Facebook, facebook.com slash penhabit, on Twitter, which is twitter.com slash penhabit, and on penhabit.com itself. The methods vary, the methods of entry vary from giveaway to giveaway, but they usually require you to do something. So to leave a blog comment, send an email, sign up for a newsletter, follow someone on Twitter or Instagram, sometimes me, sometimes someone else. And uh, just a side note, if you're already following that person, you don't need to unfollow and follow again. You just need to tell Rafflecopter that you're already following and then you're entered. So once the giveaway is done, Rafflecopter picks a winner and then there are two additional steps that I take before I announce the winner. First, and this is important, so pay attention, I verify every winning entry that Rafflecopter selects. So if you entered by saying that you follow me on Twitter, I'm going to go to Twitter and verify that you are in fact following me before I announce the winner. Uh, if I ask you to leave a comment on the blog post, I will verify that you left a comment and that you followed the instructions. So a good for instance is if I asked you to say what ink you'd pair with a pen and your comment only says, I hope I win, you're disqualified. Uh, with the value of the pens that I'm going to be giving away this season, I'm going to be a real stickler for the rules because frankly, it makes it more fun for me. So if you enter, be sure to follow the instructions. Mwahahaha. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm a stickler for the rules and always have been, so 
I get serious about it. Secondly, after I have verified that the entry is good, I'm going to email the winner directly and let them know they have won. Immediately after emailing the winner, I, I announce the winner on Facebook, Twitter, and on the original blog post. So most of the giveaways have a time limit during which the winner will need to respond with their mailing address to claim the prize. If they miss, and that usually that window is like 48, 72 hours. So if you miss that window, then your entry is again, disqualified and another winner is drawn. So far in all of my giveaways that I've done over the last three seasons, I haven't had a single winner that has failed to claim their prize. But if I had to guess, I'd say that probably 50% of the winners for past giveaways had to be disqualified because they either weren't following on Twitter or Instagram like they said they were, or they didn't follow the instructions for the blog posts or the emails. The way I figure it, for a hobby full of people who like to write, we should all have pretty darn good reading comprehension. So I'm going to hold you to a high standard. Um, if, if we're giving away $600 pens, you're going to have to work for it just a little bit. So that's what giveaways are. That's how they're going to be run. Uh, it, it's a system that works for me. Not everybody likes it. Frankly, I think you'll find I don't really care if you don't like it. You don't have to enter. So that is giveaways for season four. Now, if you haven't been watching my currently inked vlogs this summer, you may have also missed that my line of notebooks, the Inky Fingers notebooks, was released in August. Now, they're available in blank, lined, and a currently inked format in traveler's notebook and pocket notebook sizes. These notebooks are made from wheat straw paper that is both fountain pen and environmentally friendly, and it's made from the byproduct of wheat farming after the grain has been harvested. So this paper is really thin, has a real slight texture to it, giving you a bit more tactile of an experience than you get with other really glossy fountain pen friendly papers. And it absorbs ink better for a, a little bit shorter drying time. These notebooks have been selling really well so far and they are available for sale from Van Ness Pens at vanness1938.com and from the Pen Habit web store at penhabit.com shop. There are going to be other formats coming out as well, including graph, dot grid, and a new bullet style planner. And I'm looking into the possibility of doing different sizes, like an A5 size, a hardcover bound journal, that sort of thing. So just keep an eye out for those over the coming season. Um, I'm sure I'll announce them here if, if any of those do come out. Well, I think that should just about do it for this welcome video. I am super excited to be starting up a new season of reviews and videos. There are going to be some really great pens up for review this season, and I've tried to be as inclusive as I can. I've gone from super expensive pens all the way up to some of the most expensive pens I've ever used. Um, I want to try to spread them out as best I can and, and appeal to as many people in the community as possible, so I'm trying to get a little bit of everything. I'm also going to be spending some more time this season looking into the world of vintage fountain pens. So during the hiatus, I was able to attend two different pen shows. I went to DC in August and San Francisco at the end of August. And while there was a lot to look at at those shows, I found several vintage fountain pens that caught my eye. Now, I've said this before, but vintage is an area of pen collecting and use that I want to understand better than I do. It's an area I haven't spent a lot of time. And so I'm going to be taking you along with me as I learn more about this wide world of vintage fountain pens. So I hope you enjoy all the changes and updates to Pen Habit this season, and that you enjoy the videos as much as I really do enjoy making them. So here's to a wonderful new year of inky fingers, lovely nibs, and gorgeous pens. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great season four. Bye.